Ostap and Seti Astro Suite. Need I say more? Welcome to Seti Astro. So be sure you get the latest version of Seti Astro Suite. You can always visit my website, setiastro.com, under Astro Program, Seti Astro Suite. It has the Get It Here link. It takes you over to the GitHub repository where we have all the uh, versions of Seti Astro Suite. Make sure you get 2.10.8. And the other thing you're going to have to get is the Ostap Astro Stacking Program. I have to imagine almost everybody already has this. Um, maybe if you're new to astrophotography or using a smart telescope, you may not have uh, this particular program yet. But this is a, a great tool. Not only is it a, a stacking program if you want to use it for that, but I think most people use it because it can do plate solving. So they use it with things like Nina, Sequence Generator Pro, and, and a bunch of others to do plate solving for them. And we're going to leverage that. So be sure you go to Ostap's website. I'll have the link in the description below. They have downloads for the various operating systems you're on. Uh, I'm on Windows primarily, so I got the Windows 64-bit program. You're also going to need to download star databases. Uh, I recommend the D80. That's going to be the very large star database installer. They also have the Hyperlita catalog with a bunch of galaxies listed in there too. Uh, that's optional. Really what you need to make any of this work with SETI Astro Suite is you'll, you'll need the, the Stellar database and your, your program. So be sure to download and install those if you haven't already. Now let's go ahead and fire up the, the new version of SETI Astro Suite. You're going to find under Preferences now, there's an OSTAP executable path. So be sure to set this to the path to the actual executable for OSTAP. In Windows, you're going to find it in Program Files, OSTAP, and then the OSTAP.exe. Linux and Mac will be a little different. Uh, your guys' executable doesn't have a, a file extension. It's just called OSTAP, but be sure to point to it just the same. And now under, it's the Mosaic tab. I might rename this to like Star Stuff or something. You're going to find, along with Mosaic Master, our Stellar Alignment, also Plate Solve, and PSF Viewer. Now, for everything that requires a plate solved solution, it's going to try running OSTAP first. And if it fails there, then it's going to default to trying to get the blind solve from astrometry.net. So this is going to be good if you don't have an internet connection as well. Also, OSTAP's a lot faster than astrometry.net. So it's definitely worth it. It's set up to do a blind solve uh, with auto pixel scale and everything. So. Uh, you really just need to load an image and let OSTEP do its thing. So let's go ahead. I'm going to just load up an image here. OSTEP works best with linear data. If it's not linear, in the background it is going to normalize it to a pseudo-linear state. But plate solving is always best done right away if you haven't done that yet. So you can see this, this is a linear data. It is a FITS file, but you don't need a FITS file to work. It has a bunch of stuff off to the side. But now I'll click Plate Solve. It's going to ask you where you want to solve from. Uh, you can solve just a file. Currently our image is in slot zero, so here's our slots. I'm going to say Select Slot. Now it says Select at Slot Zero. And start plate solving. And it's going to call OSTAP, and you should see it in the upper corner. Uh, working through the working through the solution, it will take it a, a little bit of time. It's I mean a heck of a lot faster than astrometry.net. You can see it running through the different uh, pixel scales, and it's going to search from zero to 180 degrees. And once it finds it, it's going to pull up a, a dialog for you to to save your plate solved fits. You're definitely going to want to do this. I'm just going to save it uh, under this test.fits. And then it says uh, plate solved, save to test.fits, hit OK. And then it's going to ask you if you want to open the newly saved plate solve fits file. I'm going to say yes. And then uh, it'll say it was successful. And now in the fits header, uh, it'll, it'll change if you had an, another. So this is in the new image. But importantly, it's these values, these CD1 and 2 and CR vals, CR picks. That's your actual plate solve solution. 
So now this, this is plate solved. Also in things like Mosaic Master, now if you're going to add things, all your images, uh, this, this does recognize it's, you know, WCS, we just solved it. But if we force it to have a blind solve and say, let's just create the mosaic, you're gonna see it's attempting the OSTAP solution first. And it's gonna go ahead and run OSTAP to find the astrometric solution if possible. And then again, if it fails, at that point, it'll start using astrometry.net as, as the blind solve fail safe. But it found it, and in this case, it was just an example that only had one image. Great, it did a mosaic with, with one image. The other area you're gonna find it is under what's in my image. Now, when you load an image here, like here's a TIFF, it doesn't have any astrometry data. Do you wanna perform a blind solve? Say yes. And you can see here in the status, attempting OSTAT plate solve. So again, in what's in my image, it's going to go ahead and do the OSTAP attempt first prior to moving onto astrometry.net. And now we have a solution with um, OSTAP now instead of astrometry.net. And again, if you don't have OSTAP, just cancel out and it will go ahead and do the astrometry.net solution for you. But um, again, the OSTAP is gonna be very, very fast. Now let's go into the other new feature I added here. So let's go ahead and just open an image. And this is going to be my PSF viewer. So you can click PSF viewer here, or again, under the, the mosaic. And it's gonna ask you two things. Do you wanna do the, the quick mode or the detailed mode? The quick mode is a coarser look at all the stars. So the full width half max won't be as detailed. Um, but it's going to be much quicker. If you don't mind spending a little extra time, go ahead and do the, the detailed. I'll, I'll put it on the detailed and click OK. You'll have a little uh, please wait thing come up as it goes through and calculates um, all the stars in the image and give you that detailed look. Again, on the quick version, the quick version is going to be 10 times faster, but um, it's not going to be as precise with the full width half max for all the all the various stars and, and you'll see here in a second now instead of giving you one number for like the psf of the of the image or whatever I, I i never found that i didn't like that ever in my mind because the the stars vary across the whole thing so this is this is what it's going to show you here here's a histogram plot of the um the count of stars versus the the psf on the bottom here and then off on the right, you're going to have the full width half max, uh, the min and max, the median is 4.25. So, you know, that's that's probably the number you would have got spat out before is the, the 4.25. But then we got a whole bunch of other things here based on the different um, stellar profiles. We have like the average sharpness, the, the roundness of the, the star. So the roundness one and roundness two, that's the the X and Y directions. So you can see, um, you know, in general, in, in my case here, the, the stars are a little more elongated in the, the one direction than the other. It has, you know, the, the number of pixels consumed by the, the star there. And then another fun thing you can do is click show flux histogram. It's all gonna be smashed up on the left there, but you could toggle the um, log of the X axis. And now you can see the flux the stellar flux profile, these are relative numbers, so they don't match up to uh, magnitude per se, but you can um, really see the, the profile of the brightness of all the different, all the different stars in there. Uh, so it's just, just something else fun to, to look at when you're looking at PSF, but um, that's going to be the, the PSF viewer, and this was the detailed view, and you could see all the graduation in there. If we run the quick view, it's going to be 10 times faster, like I said, but the, the buckets for the histogram are going to be uh, just that much coarser. And here you go now. On, on the quick view, it's not nearly as uh, detailed in the number of buckets in the histogram. Uh, you still get kind of the, the same overall shape. This one's saying the median is 4 now because it didn't have as many 
buckets that to, to utilize from. But again, you can, you can go ahead and, and look at the, the Stellar Flux profiles and uh, see what number you really want to use for your PSF. Again, one number is always, it's always hard to judge an entire image based on one PSF number. So this is going to actually show you all the stars in your image and how they, how they stack up with their, their own PSF values. So just another fun tool here now in SETI Astro Suite, along with incorporating uh, OSTAP for all your, your plate solving needs. It's going to be so much faster. I highly recommend you get it and incorporate it here with SETI Astro Suite. Please comment, like, and subscribe.